Hi, everyone again, and um, thank you for coming to our second meeting of um, Cork Humanist. The Cork Humanist is set up for, really for the non-religious people of Cork to have a place to come together, secular education, which um, is an issue that's constantly coming up. It's uh, very popular, it's very topical, and um, a, lot of, a lot of members have mentioned it to us as well, like, what is it? Who is it? Well, where are the non-denominational schools? Where can we send our children? And, and I don't know, and Erin doesn't know, but Jane knows, and um, Jane can tell us about this. So I'm going to introduce you to Jane Jolly. Jane Jolly is from Atheist Ireland, and she is the Education Policy Officer. So if there is someone in the know for uh, non-religious education, I think Jane is the one. As you know, my name is Jane Donnelly. I'm the Education Policy Officer for Atheist Ireland. I have been... Um, for about, I think it's about two years now. Atheist Ireland was set up in 2008. But I was involved in the education system before that, or hassling in the education system, because I got involved because my children were discriminated against in the education system and forced into religious practice and service. And I decided within, as a parent, to challenge the system. And um, I found out on the ground um, how to do that, whether it works, and I'm afraid I have to tell you that it doesn't work. It's very, very difficult. And um, I got into finding out about why I hadn't got these rights. What were the rights first of all, and what, what rights under the Constitution I had, under the various uh, edu uh, Education Act, the Equal Status Act, and um, then I looked at a human rights framework um, for those rights. And um, I started lobbying and um, hassling a lot of people over it. And I still am. And that's why I'm here today. And, and thank you for asking me. What I want to do, first of all, is set out a framework for the education system. So that sometimes you get lost and bogged down in the detail of it all. Because there's so many aspects of it. It's, you know, you have the Constitution. Then you have opt-out rights and all this whole different area um, and people get lost in it. Uh, somebody told me once, uh, uh, she's a, a lawyer and she does research on this whole area and she said to me, but it's very simple Jane, you just stick to these points and everything like that. But I've never believed that and it is quite difficult for people to understand. But um, the best approach uh, in Atheist Island we have found is to look at it as a rights based approach. What are your rights? Um, and know your rights in detail, and exactly where are your rights? And then fight on, those ba on the basis of that. Now, there's different interpretations of what those rights are in Ireland. But, um, uh, so I'll start with um, a, a framework. Um, we have the Constitution, and there's articles in the Constitution that deal with education and religion. And um, then there's an article in the Constitution that we never kind of really talk about in relation to education, which is Article 41, which is equality before the law, which is a, a major issue in education. So there's um, those, I'll actually, if you're writing down that column, um, education comes under Article 42. And in religion, I have a well-worn Constitution here, religion is Article 44. But the two of them are connected because there's no separation of church and state in the Irish education system. They are one, as you'll find out. Um, so there's various articles under the Constitution and then there's um, human rights law and the various conventions that Ireland has ratified. Um, the Dáil has ratified these very con various conventions, like the Convention on the Rights of the Child and everything like that. But what the Dáil has said is that um, these um, conventions are the same as the rights in, under our Constitution. And they keep saying that all the time, and they tell the UN that. But it hasn't worked out on the ground that we have the rights under human rights law that uh, um, other, say, parents, Catholic parents have in the Irish Constitution. Uh, we are actually second-class citizens. Now, there is a word to describe the Irish education system, one single word, and that is discrimination, because that's what it is. It is discriminates against minorities and non-religious parents. Now, it's not just uh, um, 
non-religious parents. It discriminates against religious minorities as well. So this, uh, that's a very important. Now, the United Nations uh, Human Rights Committee and the various committees uh, at the UN and the Council of Europe um, have raised the issue of this discrimination um, against non-religious uh, children and parents in the Irish education system with the Irish state. And they have uh, uh, raised this issue four times now. And the Council of Europe have raised it once. And the, the, their observations on the Irish education system are very strong. And they raise, they raise the issue under certain rights. And um, I have a list of all those, if anybody wants them, all the observations of the UN and what they have said. So in Atheist Ireland, what we have done, our policy is based on uh, looking for a secular education system based on human rights law. Because uh, we have found that the Constitution doesn't protect us. It has failed the Irish Constitution to protect our basic human rights. So we look to the United Nations and we're lobbying in that area um, to put pressure on the state um, to do something about the education system. And uh, we have found, especially with the blasphemy law and things like that, uh, that the pressure from outside has worked than pressure from inside sometimes with different countries and the UN and uh, putting pressure on the state. So, um, so you have the Constitution, and um, all laws reflect the Constitution. So the Education Act is a reflection of the Constitution, and um, the Equal Status Act is a reflection of the Constitution as well. So um, the next thing is to um, lay out in detail what are your rights. Now, every child has a right to an education. Now, the essence of the right to education belongs to the child. And we're inclined to forget that in Ireland because we always think that it's the parents have the right. But the essence of the right belongs to the child. And the, the right uh, um, is for the state to respect the f uh, religious and philosophical convictions of all parents, not just the religious majority in a particular country. That is the obligation on the state. And it's the obligation on the state under the Irish Constitution. Now, everybody always uh, seems to think that there is an absolute right under the Irish Constitution for a religious education for your child. That is Catholic Church teaching. That is not actually in the Constitution. If you look at the, the article in the Constitution, it says that the state must respect the religious and philosophical convictions of all parents. Now, respect them doesn't mean that the state should fund a religious education for every child in the country. But a, a denominational education under another article is constitutionally sound. It is there. But in the Constitution, the state are not obliged to fund a denomination e education for every child in the country. And if you think about that, it is absolutely ridiculous. How could the state do it? How could the state fund religious education for every family in the country, in their own denomination? Uh, uh, Paul Rowe once, I, I think at the Forum of Patronage and Pluralism, he was saying the average uh, um, amount of religions in a particular school is 12. So in one school educated together, you could have 12 different religions. And they have one school where there's 17 now in Ireland. So if the state was obliged, under the Irish Constitution, to fund a religious education for every one of those 17 religions, how could they do it? You can't do it. So what happened, has happened in Ireland is that the state has funded the religious education for the Catholic majority, at, um, the, uh, um, which has resulted in uh, religious minorities and uh, the non-religious human rights being breached. Now, there's a whole area in the Constitution where all this comes up and all and everything like that, but um, it's just bogged you down in detail if we go into every bloody case. Now, the other interesting thing in our Constitution is that the state provides for education as opposed to provide education. The Irish education system is unique in that. We're, God, nobody else in the world has a, an education system like ours. They provide for the education of children in private schools. 
and um, they just literally absolve themselves of responsibility. That's what has happened in our republic. They say, uh, um, and the Supreme Court have used the word, they cede control to the interests of patron bodies and boards of management. So they're literally, literally handing over control of the education of children to private bodies and institutions. And in the case of the Catholic Church, a foreign state, we've just broken diplomatic relations with them, which is great. <laughs> We're not diplomatic, we, we've uh, closed down our, um, the Irish have closed down the embassy. Um, but that is, we have ceded control to the Holy See, because patron bodies um, have a right to determine their ethos, and they have the, so much power under the Irish education system. So, um, un, under one article in the Constitution, 4232, um, there is the, the state uh, are obliged to um, help the, her parents with the moral education of their children. They actually, it doesn't say the religious education of their children, but what has happened in, in Ireland is that they have linked, linked religion to morals, as if we do not have any morals. And so all schools, the children just get a moral education in schools, but it's a, a moral education based on their religion, the religion of their parents. And it's not a basic uh, um, moral education that all parents and that we all would share as individual citizens in an Irish Republic. I mean, we don't believe that you should go around and kill everybody or, or rob everybody. Those basic things, and you should have empathy with other citizens of the state and everything like that. But under the Irish Constitution, the, the state are obliged to see that all children have a basic moral and a basic education, but they have linked the word moral with religion. Um, now the next thing is, does anybody want to ask any questions on that? On the constitution or anything like that? Okay. Uh, the next um, issue uh, under um, the Irish constitution is the right to opt out of religion. Now that is there. Uh, uh, for denominational schools, the funding of denominational schools comes under article 4424. And in that article, um, the state uh, can fund uh, denominational schools, but there is a right to opt out in that article. There's a right to opt out of religious instruction in schools. And that, is that right then is reflected in the Education Act. It comes under Section 30. But that right has turned out to be, uh, it's not operational in practice on the ground, but it has turned out to be opting out of the basic religious instruction class. Now, there's, there, there's also another thing in the Constitution that says there's a difference between religious education and religious instruction in the Irish Constitution. There's two words there. And the courts have found this to mean that religious instruction is the formal religion class that is for half an hour every day. And you can opt out of that. But you cannot opt out of religious education that is integrated into the very uh, fabric of the school and into the curriculum. So when we speak of religious education, uh, um, it is one thing. That is, what is the characteristic spirit, what they talk of in the Education Act, or ethos as we all know it. Um, but uh, formal religious instruction classes is what they mean by opting out. Uh, um, you cannot opt out an ethos which is, and that's the way the constitution is set up. They don't see religious education in schools uh, um, as, as, uh, as breaching your rights. Uh, um, they see uh, religious instruction as breaching your rights, the former class, so you can opt out, but you have, there is no supervision and there's nothing in the Education Act that obliges the state to supervise Provide funding for supervision of your children if you opt them, opt them out of the formal religious instruction class. So uh, your child will have to stay in the class, or some schools could put the child in another class or something like that, but uh, um, they're not obliged to do so. Your child will have to stay in the class, neither colour or whatever, or do some of their own work. They're not a, they cannot give the, your child anything to do some schools think they can give them something to do to learn uh, um, about different religions and things like that, but they cannot give your child, they cannot, you, they cannot oblige your child to do that. Uh, you can fight that. 
Uh, uh. So 